Welcome to Tide Talks, presented by RWJ Barnabas Health, the official healthcare provider for Princeton Athletics. This is a monthly interview series as part of the celebration of 50 years of women's athletics at Princeton. I am your host, Krista Samaras, member of the great class of 1990. Nine. Today, I have welcoming me Blake Dietrich, class of 2015, captain of the 30 and 0 team, holds the record for single uh, season assists at 157, was a unanimous All Ivy Player of the Year her senior year, and now occupies only one, a uh, one of only 144 spots in the WNBA, playing for the Atlanta Dream. Blake. <laughs> what makes you so awesome? Thank you for that intro. Oh my goodness. That's probably the best one I've ever had. That gets me hyped up. What do you think makes you so awesome? I think a lot of hard work and a lot of a lot of dedication to this sport that's given me so much. Um, but just, you know, always thinking about what's next and what I can do better and always just looking to be that 1% better constantly, never settling, never being content with where I am. Okay. Could like, give me your, I love asking this question because we're short on time. We want to get to the heart of everything. What's your <laughs> like life story in 30 seconds or less? <laughs> um, grew up in Wellesley, Mass, played tons of sports. Um, I, uh, went to Princeton, didn't think I was ever going to play professional athletics and, um, had that incredible senior season, incredible year, 30 and 0. I was so much to my teammates. And then I was on that national stage. Five years later, I've played in five different countries for eight teams, and it's been incredible. What's your favorite country that you played in? Greece, for okay. sure. It's my home country. And what was your favorite food that you had in Greece? Have to ask. I love, this is weird. Don't judge me on this one, but I love octopus. And that was, and the Greeks know how to make a good octopus. I, <laughs> true, true, true. Okay. So let me ask you if, if we went, if you went back and told your 10 year old self that you were going to go to Princeton or that you're one day going to play in the WNBA, which one would she like freak out over more? The WNBA for sure. <laughs> My current self is freaks out more over the Princeton yes, education, same. but <laughs> 10 year old Blake would have said, WBA. And what did Princeton provide for you that allowed you to take this huge step into professional play and just being the person that you are, which which from everybody I talk to is a relentless competitor? I, you must have talked to Coach Banghart. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah, just the ability and the the ex expectation of excellence at Princeton, whether it was athletics or in the classroom, that was always just a high level that was expected and nothing else was good enough. And so taking that into my own life, into life after college, I think has made me successful. Are you confident? Sometimes, depends on the situation. Mm. When are you, when are you the most confident? When I'm on a basketball court. Really? Because yeah, because it's very easy for me to know. I know the steps that get me to a place where I'm comfortable. You know, if I'm coming into a game and it's watching film, knowing the scout like the back of my hand, getting up the shots I need to get up. The recipe is I know the recipe by heart. So I know when I can be comfortable in that game. But other stuff outside of basketball is is a different world. <laughs> a different world. Well, so what has Princeton, having gone to Princeton and getting that great getting that great education where the expectation is excellence, how is that helping you navigate the world of right now, navigate professional play? And and I can imagine whatever you imagine your next steps will be. I think change is something that we were always prepared for and change was something that was thrown at us at Princeton occasionally. And so just being ready and always adaptable and adjusting to that and this new life that we're living right now, um, that has certainly helped. I think living overseas has really helped me with that as well. So when you go overseas and you're the only American on a team, you don't necessarily know everyone. It's a little bit isolating. So I feel like I've been training for quarantine for five seasons. So. <laughs> I've definitely had some experience with this and I don't feel like it was it was the 
biggest adjustment for me and I saw other people struggling a lot, but for me, we, I was prepared. <laughs> and are you, are you, have you always been a natural leader? Do you find that leadership comes naturally to you? Because I heard this story where you said, um, I guess it was the Michigan game after the Michigan game, five games, in, five games into that crazy season where you guys went 30, no, we're like, we're going 30, no this year because like we beat Michigan. And so what, what gave you like one, the confidence, I guess you were on the court at that point, but also like just the, 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 the gump, the oomph, the gusto to like, to lead your team in that way by, you know, I don't know, calling the shot. <laughs> yeah. I think leadership is a learning experience constantly. And my junior year, I don't think I led in the best way. I think I was extremely demanding and not, um, trying to bring everyone along. So that took a bit of soul searching. I took a lot of reading. I read Coach K's book over the summer and just tried to figure out um, how to be the best leader for my teammates. And that means supporting everyone, not just being a, a like cracking the whip kind of thing. And then also having the support of Coach Banghart to be to be given the green light to kind of, this is your team, do what you need to do, take it in the direction you want to take it. And so having that support and then learning to be a better leader constantly um, has helped me. And that was definitely the true in that case. Now, so one of 144 spots in the WNBA, living so many kids' dreams, I know mine. Mm -hmm. um, and as an aside, I, I also wanted to play basketball and lacrosse at Princeton. You played lacrosse at Princeton for two seasons. That's so awesome. So I, when I was researching you, I was like, oh my gosh, we have a, a lot in common here. Um, but I want to know what it takes to get to be one of those 144 players and now what it's like having had such a great career at Princeton, um, what it's like to fight every day for, for minutes and for to be a valuable asset to the team and to keep one of those spots. What, what is it like and what has it been like, of course, recently? Yeah, it's crazy that the first thing I would talk about and the, my first, the first words to describe that answer are the intangibles. You think it would be skill. You think it would be your ability to make shots, your ability to defend. But at the end of the day, you have a roster of 12 people and you need that 12, those 12 people to be cohesive. So if you don't, if you have people on your team who maybe aren't playing a ton of minutes and are also really upset about not playing those many, many minutes or have a bad attitude, aren't working hard, that will destroy your team. So for me, I had to be that person who was going to be excited to be there every day, whether I played one minute or whether I played 40 minutes. And I really do truly believe on top of the basketball skill, that those were the things that kept me on rosters and gave me the opportunities to prove myself on the basketball in the, in the basketball side. Hmm. What matters to you right now? So many things, <laughs> social justice, <laughs> voting, um, what our season is going to look like next season um women's athletics from the children all the way up to professional um equality for women for people of color for everyone mm. the, those are top of mind right now <laughs> yeah yeah and what do you what are the couple words that come to mind when you think back to your princeton experience rewarding challenging and community just the the community of women that were my teammates and my my partners and everything that we that we did it was just absolutely unbelievable they're friends for life they're bridesmaids in my wedding and whatever else you know you want to talk about aunts to my children but um yeah just the best group of people i could ever imagine mm. and what is next for you what are you what are you planning what are you scheming what are you what are you doing next <laughs> yeah i'm always trying to pay attention to that and take some courses during while i'm playing you know we have some downtime overseas so use that time wisely and um i've done some hard, some work with Harvard Business School. And I think maybe business school will be in my future, something in the corporate or athletics sphere, whether it's with professional athletics, front office type thing, or coming back to a university, maybe working as an AD, something like that. <laughs> that maybe Princeton, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, so, so let me ask you this sort of just to like wrap this all up. I loved when I asked you like, what makes you so great? You weren't like, well, I'm not so great. You were really able to own it. I think this is one of the things that's common among my teammates um, from Princeton is that we, we really understand the impact that we made in our sport. Um, mm -hmm. And we were trying to duplicate that impact in our own lives now. What is your distinguishing characteristic like that were, that you take and occupy the world with right now that you can have on and off the court and that you think you also grew or grew more of from Princeton? Resilience. Mm -hmm. I think um, I have been cut many times. I have been knocked down many times. And I think in the world that we're living in right now, your ability to bounce back 
from hardship is what's going to define you. So I think that is the number one thing. Coming into Princeton, I did barely played. You know, I had to work my way up through the roster. Same thing in the WNBA, earning barely any minutes and now like establishing myself a little bit better. And it's the same thing in the world. You're never going to come in. Well, maybe some players will, but you don't come in usually and just absolutely crush it from the beginning. You have to take some knocks and keep grinding and keep fighting. And so I think that that's, that's something that applies to sports and also applies to the rest of life. What do you think 10 years from now looks like for you? Well, I hope I'm crushing it. Probably not playing anymore. Don't know if the body is going to last that long. <laughs> But crushing it in some other field, maybe have some little little future Princeton nuggets running around. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I can't thank you enough. It's been so amazing. You know, you were born in 1993. That's the year before I graduated high school. Um, oh but <laughs> it's been great to research you and to see just how much you crushed it at Princeton and all the ways that I value the underdog all the way to the leader of the team. And now repeating that process again at the WNBA. Blake? You are awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And you are certainly also awesome. Woo! So I love it. <laughs> <laughs> <Tigers>. <laughs>